fighting is one of the most spectacular sports in the world. It is also one of the most dangerous. The Cowboys are riding 2,000 pounds of raw power that will do anything to get them off their backs. Fortunately, bull riders have very special guardian angels, the bullfighters, also known as the rodeo clowns. Their job is to protect the riders from the bulls, whatever the cost may be. If anybody's gonna get hit out there, it's gonna be us. We're gonna take the hook. They may be called clowns, but there's nothing funny about their job. There's a chance that hey, you could go out there and lose your life. Daryl Diefenbach is one of the best bullfighters in the world. He left his family and friends back home in Australia and is now fighting bulls full-time all over North America. You know, I go to bed at night and I dream about fighting bulls. Can you sign my shirt? You bet. Right now, 30-year-old Daryl is getting ready for the start of La Fiesta de los Vaqueros, Tucson's 80th annual professional rodeo and one of the most prestigious events in North America. He will be working with two young up-and-comers, Quirt Hunt and Jeff Franks, both 26 years old. Casey Wells will act as a substitute bullfighter in case one of the guys gets hurt. Are you kidding? Odds are he'll see some action real soon. Today's show is going to be tough. It's been raining for a couple of days in Tucson, and the normally dry ground has turned into deep, sticky mud. If they get caught in the middle of the arena with a charging bull on their heels, they will be sitting ducks. The riders are ready and the bulls are lined up in the chutes. The bullfighters are taking their positions on each side of the arena. The crowd is on its feet. It's showtime. The three bullfighters can barely move in the mud, and the bulls are extremely aggressive. Not a good mix. It's sticky. Give the bullfighters a little welcome back, if you would. Daryl Diefenbach, Jeff Franks, Bert Hunt. Thanks, man. Oh, yeah, you're welcome. Yes, sir. I'll tell you what. You Next one you take them and they go watch bull runs in the air conditioned Coliseum. Yeah. Even if they know that they can't get away from the bulls, the bullfighters will try to save the riders no matter what happens. Man, it just hurts all the way down to my knee from there all the way up. You don't have to keep the upper body moving quite as much to keep the center of gravity right in the middle of that pool. Well, he comes to me and it's so wet and slippery out there, you know, just, there ain't no getting away from them. The conditions are so rough today that the substitute bullfighter is sent in to help his colleagues. They will need all the help they can get. Uh, you know, I fear nothing but the wrath of God, so, um, fearless, yes, I am. Um, ready to, uh, ready to go to work, yeah. How about it for the ball ride in Tucson? Rodeos are extremely popular in North America. Millions of fans crowd the arenas to watch a variety of competitions, from roping events all the way to bronco riding. But none is as exciting as bull riding. There you go, there you go! It's the 
ultimate adrenaline rush. A showdown between one man and 2,000 pounds of raw power and untamed rage. The bulls are extremely aggressive. They will buck as hard as they can to get their tormentors off their back. The riders only have to stay on for eight seconds to score points. But on the back of one of these beasts, eight seconds is a lifetime. All right, lost his bull rope. Jeff Frank comes in there and makes it good, makes it good save. For the riders, the most dangerous part of the job starts after those eight seconds. Sitting on a bull is the safest place a rider can be because once they're back on the ground, the bulls go straight for them. The bulls will hook, gore, stomp, and kick the downed rider if given half a chance. Every rider has been hurt at least once by a bull. Some have been killed. The best way to protect the riders is to give the bulls something else to go after, or more precisely, Someone else. That's when the bullfighters come to the rescue. I would describe my job as uh, standing on a street corner. You see the wreck coming, and you think, I better jump in between there just to see what happens. It's hard to even describe how important they are to us, you know, because those guys, they put their lives on the line every time we nod our heads, you know. Um, they're out there to take a hook in. I mean, they're out there to put sacrifice their bodies for us. I think they're all a little bit crazy. <laughs> they're, they're crazier than we are, I think. How'd you like that, huh? Dressed in clown outfits and makeup, they will do whatever it takes to save the riders. I mean, there's no telling how many lives I've saved fighting bulls, and I don't want to know, but I know I've saved a lot of a lot of guys from serious injuries. There you go. Good job, Clark. Good job, The only difference between dodging cars in the middle of a highway and fighting bulls is that the car drivers would try to avoid you. The bulls will do their very best to kill you. Some people think the bullfighters have a death wish. Others think of them as warriors ready to make the ultimate sacrifice so that others may live. To me, fighting bulls is one of the most unselfish things you can do. One thing is certain, they are extreme athletes who put their lives on the line every time they step in the arena. Yeah. Thanks, Clark. Step out and do the breathing. No, I can't. Get a breather. See, we got plenty to go around. Bullfighting is a violent way to earn a living, and injuries and pain are part of the job. So when I bring it this way, is that pitching on the left or not? Most rodeo clowns have broken so many bones that they lose track of their personal injury list. I broke a lot of ribs and bruised lung, and, and I've had some internal, you know, soreness and stuff. Uh, my knees, I've had scopes on both my knees and uh, broke my leg twice and fractured my wrists and knuckles, break my knuckles and my jaw and I split my, I took a hook in the jaw and I cracked it and split my chin. Surprisingly, rodeo clowns wear very little protection. They wear hockey pants with foam to protect their hips and upper thighs, knee pads, soccer shin guards, and cleats for better footing. Most will have their ankles taped up. Considering what they're up against, it seems a bit reckless not to wear head protection or even a jock strap. Protection for each guy is so different from the next and the next and the next uh, because what might work for you uh, will not work for me. The most important piece of protection they wear is their plastic vest. Basically, it protects uh, your front, your back, and your sides. Um, I wear it a lot looser than most guys. Uh, it's just a preference. Preparing for a show often means spending a few hours with an athletic trainer who will try to make their day at the office a little less painful. 
For some, even serious leg injuries won't stop them. Daryl Diefenbach will be fighting bulls this week on a knee that needs major surgery. When he injured his knee, Should he? he tore the anterior cruciate ligament, which is really one of the main ligaments that hold the femur to the tibia and keeps the knee from moving in this pattern. And what happens is if somebody tears this and it doesn't get fixed, their knee continues to do this. As that happens, you end up beating up cartilage on the end of the bone or the meniscus, the shock absorber in the knee. Huh? And unfortunately, a couple of weeks ago, he had one of these episodes where his knee shifted like this, and he subsequently tore the meniscus. And so now he's dealing with the meniscus tear and the ligament tear. And so each time he tries to run or pivot, his knee shifts on him. It's inevitable I'm going to have to have surgery. It's a minimum of really a six-month injury of getting back to doing what he does. It cost me 40, 50,000. Just in rodeos, I lose. In his profession, six months can be a career. <laughs> I mean, it can be a career ending injury in any level of um, athletes, but certainly six months out of the business for him, I'm sure, would be very difficult, which is why he's trying to put it off. There goes my dream, there goes everything I've ever worked for. So it's a really, really tough call for me. A charging bull can run three times faster than a grown man. Now imagine trying to run for your life, hopping on one leg. Honestly, I think there ain't nothing that can keep me down. You know, I've been through the worst stuff, and, and I'm still here. Good job, man. <laughs> Daryl knows very well that he is not up to his usual standards of excellence. His knee may slow him down, but his heart and courage should compensate for his injury. You can't be, afford to be scared. If you walk into the arena and you're scared, then not only you're going to get hurt, but most importantly, the bull riders are going to get hurt. A lesson that young Quirt Hunt is about to learn the hard way. I've been fighting bulls for about going on nine years, I guess. I still don't honestly have an answer for why I do it. I think it's just something that I fell into that I had a knack at. Good, good, good. Quirt Hunt is a very good bullfighter, and he knows the bulls would kill him in a wink and a flash. He will do his job, but he won't take unnecessary chances. I like to slick in there and get the bull off the cowboy and divert his attention, whether I'm on two feet or making contact, you know what I mean? Um, I'm not one of them guys that's going to run in there and jump on his head every time unless it's absolutely necessary, you know what I mean? That's the last resort. Is that that? Put your hands together. Come on. Help me Is that out. that little fighter? I will, I will. All right, we're... Yes, sir, baby, no! This next bull has got a nasty reputation, and Quirt knows about it. Hey, Casey, really poppy. He'll hook you. Fast. Hooky, hooky, hooky. And I got butterflies, and there's certain bulls that get me bigger butterflies in my stomach. But, uh, yeah, I get nervous. If you get to worrying about the bulls, how big they are, how big their horns are, how scary they are, how mean they are, then, you know, they're gonna beat you. They're gonna beat you in your mind. I just couldn't get turned. I was wanting to, but I couldn't get turned. It's too slick. If they get lined up by a bull, they can always try to escape by jumping over the fences. But halfway up is not good enough. Even if he does get a little nervous, Quirt Hunt, like all professional bullfighters, will never back off from the bulls. The riders' lives depend on him. Good job, Quirt. The bulls sometimes run away from the chutes and over the middle of the arena. Come on, Michael, I'll race you! <laughs> when that happens, the bullfighters have to follow them out into the open. When they get caught out there, their last hope may very well be the barrel man. In every bull riding event, there is an extra bullfighter called the Barrel Man. His job is twofold. He's there to entertain the crowd when the action slows down. 
Wow! I hear tire. Did it work? I hear tire. Oh my God! There he is. And to provide an island of safety with his barrel for the bullfighters. When they get caught in the middle of the arena, they can always hide behind the 100-pound barrel. Keep in mind that the barrel man is inside that barrel. The chances of getting hooked by a bull are less when you work in the barrel, but you're not out of the woods yet. Being a barrel man is like climbing into a, a, an electric dryer and then have, turning it on and having somebody shove it down a flight of stairs. You're never safe in there. Jim Bob Feller is a 53-year-old veteran. He'll be the man in the can for the bullfighters. Oops, freak, let's flee. Ooh, no, that's too tight. We gotta rip that out before it sticks. Jim Bob fought bulls for many years before switching from bullfighting to comedy. When I was fighting bulls, I always enjoyed being a clown and working acts, because to me, it kept my mind off of having the danger, you know, having to fight bulls and stuff. And then when it's time to do it, you just go do it. You don't have time to worry about it. The wet ground and the bulls are getting the upper hand on the bullfighters. Bullfighters, bullfighters, bullfighters. The action and the bulls are so fast, they don't have time to do anything but react. When you really know you're going to get hooked like that yellow bull, you know, I knew he was, had me, de you know, lined out. And I knew I was lined out, but uh, I was just thinking, hit the ground and curl up and jump back up as soon as you feel him going over, you know. The rain is making the animals even more hostile than normal. Fighting bulls is an art. Almost like dancers, the rodeo clowns play to the beat of the bulls. There is a safety zone around the beast in which the fighters must stay. When a bull charges the bullfighter or, or a contestant, if you can visualize a guy pushing a wheelbarrow and keep your arms straight, if I'm pushing that wheelbarrow to chase you, I have to come, I have to turn the wheelbarrow and I have to turn, bring the back end around to push into you before a bull can charge. He's got to pivot his front end and bring his rear end around and then drive into you. You know, if you can get around the bull and get on the inside shoulder, you're pretty safe because all he can do is throw his head around. He's got to bring his rear end around and drive into you. Watch closely as Casey Wells dances with a bull but never gets touched. This is how it's done. Casey had a good time with this last bull, but the people in the grandstands are somewhat disappointed. Just like the crowds at race car events, they are here to see only one thing. They come to see the wrecks. Um, that's what they come to see. They are a blood and guts uh, kind of folk that come, and uh, that's what we're here to give them. They don't want nobody to get hurt. They just want to see the wreck. And like Jeff Franks, you know, if they had milked it a little bit, maybe, they gave him a standing ovation today. You know, he ran out there, got rolled over, then run into the fence and everything. Even we had some great bareback rides and bronc rides today and some bull rides. Those people going home in the grandstand, they'll say, man, that was a good rodeo. But they, you know what they'll talk about? They'll talk about Jeff Franks getting run over. Now that's what they, that's just people's nature now. This is nothing new for Jeff Franks. He's been around bulls for a long time. I started when I was 13, uh, out in the barrel and then kind of working my way up to actually fighting the bulls. All right, now, Jeff. Don't be a hero. Jeff is not having a very good day. The bulls seem to spot him every time he's anywhere near them, and he's been hit more often than usual. It's the most hookings I've taken in one performance in a long time. But the bulls they had out today were good bucking bulls. They, they know their job. The job is after they buck the golf, look for something to hook, you know? Unfortunately, you know, it had to be me, but I guess you're better me than bull rider. It's my job. This may not look as spectacular as a direct hit, but being run over by a bull is a lot more dangerous than it looks. And then bulls waste so much, you know, they step on you, especially the back feet come down and them guys land on them. There ain't no getting up. Hey, Jeff! What the 
What are you doing? Uh, Shane Gordon is going to be your Dr. Pepper man of the day. When he says sell it, let's get out. And Jim Bob Sonner down in that barrel. Hadley. I know why they hire him now. Jeff's bad luck is making some people question his talent. Quirt Hunt, the more cautious of the gang, certainly doesn't like Jeff's style. Dumb bullfighting right there. His style of bullfighting, he won't last much longer. Jeff, he's one of the nicest kids you'd ever meet. This is his fourth year at Tucson. And I guarantee if he wasn't doing the job, this wouldn't be his fourth year. I wouldn't put myself, you know, saying I'm, I'm good, or I wouldn't put myself saying I'm bad. Uh, I guess, you know, the, be the best bullfighters, I guess you could say, are modest. You know, uh, you know, keeps from being too cocky. For the bullfighters, getting hurt is just part of the job. Meddling with angry animals the size and weight of a small car is not the best way to live a long and healthy life. Probably some of the most common things we see are knee injuries and back injuries. Um, we do see quite a few um, head injuries, concussion type injuries, um, and then just general soft tissue trauma, bruising, just rough game, you know, big animals. You know, there's days where I can barely get out of bed, and that might sound silly, but that's the honest truth. And, you know, I have to go and work that performance that day just as well as I did the night before or two days before, no matter how sore I am. But there are days when, when I'm so beat up that I can barely get out of bed. Back in 1994, the 19-year-old Australian national bullfighting champion, Daryl Diefenbach, broke his spine in three places when a bull threw him in the air before pounding his back. He still has three metal plates and six screws attached to his vertebrae. It took him two years to get back on his feet. They say chicks dig scars, so I should be pretty lucky, huh? Full fire step in, they're gonna keep him going. But right now, his back is the last thing on his mind. Daryl's injured knee is slowing him down. He's still going all out to protect the riders, but talent and determination may not be enough to spare him the worst. Put on you, Daryl. For Daryl Diefenbach, fighting bulls is not only a job, it's his life. Good job, Daryl, you all right? Yeah. yeah, all right. If you can imagine the feeling I get when I, when I do position myself between that bull and that bull rider, and that bull throws me in the air, gets me down, and that guy gets up and walks away, that's, it's the best feeling in the world. You, you can't even describe it. Daryl wants to keep on fighting bulls, but his knee is simply too damaged to let him do a good job. What do you mean it's, it's just weak. That's the ugly one's winning. Yeah. I just can't put it. Well, they say beauty's only skin Yeah. Even though he manages to finish today's show without getting himself or anybody else hurt, it's obvious that bullfighting superstar Daryl Diefenbach is just not up to the task. Yeah, you know, I don't feel 100%, but if I knew, I feel decent, so I knew the three of us here that these guys would take care of me and we could get the job done, so. Daryl wants to go on fighting, so he asks orthopedic surgeon Jason Dragu for a quick fix so he can finish out the week here in Tucson. I would be hesitant to inject your knee and have you go out there. I mean, you're just gonna tear up your knee. By, I mean, you're just gonna beat it up worse than it is. A decision has to be made. It's up to Gary Williams, Tucson Rodeo's general manager, to make the call. I couldn't live with myself if his career ended at Tucson um, because he's too good a friend. He's too good a friend. I would never want that. We want to see that happen. Gary Williams has no choice. He has to pull Daryl from the lineup until his knee feels better. He was pretty broken up about it, but he understood. He fully understood the reason why, because he'd be the last one to try to get it either get himself hurt or get somebody else hurt because he's not 100%. I mean, he, he understands. It, it was just, it was a very emotional moment for both of us because we're such good friends. There is no bullfighting scheduled in Tucson for the next three days, so Daryl will take this time off to work with physical therapists and try to get his injured knee back up to speed. If possible, he wants to get back in the action by the end of the week but he's gonna have to really convince me that he's sound. Daryl and his friends barely survived the weekend in Tucson. Now they get three days off to mend their minds and bodies before the action begins again.
While they rest, another bunch of bullfighters are getting ready to work in San Angelo, Texas. It's only 600 miles from Tucson, but it's a world away when it comes to bullfighting. Frank Newsom and John Brogan have been best friends for almost 15 years when they learned how to fight bulls together. I'll never forget one time, we were uh, coming from Mount Pleasant, Texas. We just entered a bullfight. I don't know who won, it didn't matter. Went out, got drunk at night. Next day, we were in a bullfight in Oklahoma City. Neither one of us, we were just barely old enough to drive. I mean, we weren't old enough to drink. And uh, we were hitting every beer store between out on the Oklahoma si uh, side. He'd go in and see if he could buy a 12-pack. If they'd sell him a 12-pack, I'd go in and I'd try to buy a 12-pack. Yeah. And we must have hit 14 stores before we got to Oklahoma City. Had just beer stacked in the back of the truck. I mean, it, it's crazy. It's just stupid. It wasn't it's stupid fun, stuff, but it, uh, I mean, it was fun. I mean, it's just the it's way we fun. lived. And it was the way we wanted to live. John still recalls the first bull he ever fought. Once I uh, found out exactly a good place to go, to get in front of a bucking bull, I uh, went to Chico, Texas, which was just a little town north of me. And uh, the guy wanted to know, you know, he, first of all, he wanted me to sign a release saying that I was 18 years old while I was only 15 years old. So uh, I had my sister sign it for me and went there and uh, just got in front of that first bull. And the feeling was like no other. Um, I'm not for sure if I did it right or if I did it wrong, but uh, gosh, it was just an adrenaline rush. So uh, I just kept going back. And for three years, I didn't tell my mom. I didn't tell her nothing until finally I come home and I was beat up. I and mean, I was red and blood. And I'd had a bad day is what it was. And uh, she finally asked me, and she tried making me quit. But uh, it was just something in me. I was already close to 18 by then, and she realized that I was going to go out and do this if I truly wanted to, whether she approved of it or not. So uh, finally, she got behind me on it, and she's been my biggest supporter ever since. Today, they are among the very best in the world. They are the perfect team. They always know exactly what the other one will do and have total trust in each other. If he had two broke legs, I'd be comfortable with him. Uh, that guy's, he's awesome. I mean, he's just, he's always where he needs to be, he's, and uh, he's always been like that. So uh, we work good together. We complement each other real well. I guess we just, you know, had like a chemistry, you know. We just got along and uh, had a lot of fun together. Working with them this week is Eddie Hatfield, a 36-year-old champion bullfighter who also happens to be one of John's best friends. Oh, and it was perfect. It was perfect timing. I never worry about anything when I step in the arena with John because I know if something gets me down or something, he's going to be there to get him off of me. The show will start in a few minutes. It's time for final preparations, both physically and spiritually. Dear Heavenly Father, please look over this arena tonight and cast away any injuries that are bestowed upon us. For it's in your name we pray. Amen. Good show, Saturday night. We got your back. We got your Show them what we're made of. The San Angelo Rodeo is held inside. The arena is smaller than in Tucson, so only two bullfighters will work at a time. John and Frank are the first ones to go in. The first bull is about to come crashing out of the chute. It's always a moment of great anticipation for the bullfighters. Something uncontrollable is about to happen. And I'm going to do my best to control it. It's, uh, it's the job that I do. You pretty much go in there expecting that the worst can happen, and you hope for the best. John and Frank are among the very best at what they do. Frank is a national champion, and John has reached the finals. These guys have moves that less experienced bullfighters can only dream about. Watching them saving riders and dodging bulls is like watching a primitive ballet. They run around the bull and disorient it to the point where the beast simply gives up. Team works everything, and, and tonight or today really proved it. Really did. There's not a feeling like it. Not a feeling like it. Oh, harsh.
That doesn't mean they always get the upper hand, though. If Frank hadn't dived to the ground, the bull would have hit him solidly. As fast as he is, he's still no match for the animal. I knew I was losing ground, so I just kind of dove and rolled, you know. Sometimes you got to do what you got to do just yeah. to get out of the way. Yeah. Scratch, claw, dig, poke their eyes out. They can run, but they cannot hide. Ultimately, the bulls always catch them. Frank is working with a broken arm. The bull had a guy down. I went in to get him up. The bull came up and hit me real hard. They put a plate and six curves in it. Ugh, slobber. And John has a broken jaw and fresh stitches under his chin. I haven't worn one of these in years. And ever since I fractured my jaw, Doc told me it'd be wise to wear one. I said, well, heck, I haven't worn one in 15 years. I said, I said, I figure it's about time I figured some of this safety out a little bit. Take care of my body a little better than I have. To stay on the bulls, riders hold on to what's called a bull rope. It's a leather strap that goes all the way around the bull and that the cowboys then wrap around their head. They put some gum on the rope to get a better grip. When they fall, or if they open their hand to get off the bull, the rope loosens up. But some of the more fearless riders use a different grip on that rope. It is aptly named a suicide wrap. Pull your rope up as tight as you want it, where it won't slip. And lay it across right there. Then bring it back underneath your wrist and back around like that. And bring it back through right there. Pull your thumb over. Run it through your pinky, and that's called the suicide wrap. They got one hand in the air, one hand on the rope. If they come off to the side where that hand's in the air, that just puts that hand in a bind. And your hand will turn over like that, and you can't open your hand. Bullfighters always try to plan in advance for the possibility of a hang-up. The one closest to the chute will take a good look at the rider's wrap to see if the rope goes between the pinky and the third finger. If so, they will alert their partner. A lot of times, a lot of times you'll see us go like this or like this. When we do this, it's when the bull rider wraps the wrap through his pinky. That's what's called a suicide wrap. He's destined to hang on. If he falls away, he's going to hang up for sure. It's our job to get in and pull that rope loose. When a cowboy is hung up, the bullfighters are his last hope. They must get him free. One will jump on the bull's head and go for the rope, while the other takes the rear end of the beast. This is without a doubt the most dangerous situation possible, both for the rider and the bullfighters. They have to move in so close to the bull that getting hooked or stepped on is a serious possibility. No fancy move will get them out of harm's way. It's just like trying to jump into a moving car. Head on, Austin! Watch closely as this next rider gets trampled on by the bull's hind legs. Incredibly, the rider manages to walk away. He's extremely lucky, and he knows it. He just stepped on my legs, and uh, it's, my pants are in there that are all ripped up. If it wasn't for the bullfighter's quick intervention, he might have lost more than his favorite jeans. A couple more inches, I wouldn't have had any kids. <laughs> Yeah. Bullfighters, like all extreme athletes, are adrenaline junkies. Danger is what gets their blood pumping. These guys actually enjoy what would have most people running for their lives. He's crazy. 
He's crazy. Loco. That adrenaline rush is unbelievable. When that bull's right up under you, there ain't no feeling like it. I mean, no feeling like it. And to step away and walk away from it, it's even, more, it's even better. For the second part of the rodeo, bullfighter Eddie Hatfield will step in for Frank Newsom. Uh, in the arena, uh, that's you know that's the best part of our day. That's when we have our fun. That's when we get paid. Uh, that's when we do what we love to do. Go ahead. Go ahead, Johnny. Go ahead. John and Eddie are in for an unexpected and unwelcome surprise with this next bull. The rider is down and Eddie is helping him up when the bull makes a U-turn in front of the exit and goes straight for the two of them. This situation could have been deadly. So it left us just exposed, just basically just standing out there. And I thought the bull was gone. I told him, I was picking the cowboy up going, you're all right, you're all right. About that time, he jumped out of my hands, and I looked up, and here comes the bull again. I, shoot, I figured he was gone. So, anyway. That was just a horrible performance. Just, we like everything to go as smooth as possible, and tonight, just, or right so far, it hadn't gone very smooth for us. Bear down now. Let it. Suicide. Anybody that's been in this business for any amount of time, who's taking it seriously, have, have gotten hurt. Go his head, go his head! You know, and they said, you're never going to realize if you really want to do this for a living until you're laying in a hospital bed, you know, with broke ribs or whatever, then you'll, then you'll know whether if this is for you or not. That's right, John Boy. Hit him! Hit him! We're the last of the, uh, what do you call it, the, the macho men, I guess, of rodeo. We don't, uh... We don't take care of our bodies and uh... As good as they are, ultimately, the bulls always get a piece of them. I've broken all my ribs, uh, a couple of them, you know, two or three times. Broke ribs, broke arms, broke legs. Broke my scapula. Broken ribs and uh, functional lung. Broke my nose. I had a bull step on the lower part of my leg uh, and kind of took off part of my calf. A bull hit me right here one time in the front and broke my bone in the back. He hit me pretty hard. And I've had a minor artery ripped out right here in my neck. I've had total knee reconstruction on my left knee. I had a bull stick a horn in my, my butt right here and then one in my leg. And just a numerous amount of stitches. A uh, broken collarbone. Lots of fingers, broke the top of my foot one time. Several concussions, lots of stitches. I'll never forget, I broke my ribs in Austin one year. And uh, when I went to the hospital, I had a chest tube in me and lung collapse and all that. Uh, I couldn't wait to get out and fight bulls again. I separated my chest cavity. First thing people ask you is your injuries. And that's probably the last thing we like to talk about. That's something that, you know, you have to get out of your head and move on. You know, because it could always happen. It could happen any night. It could happen tonight, last night, whatever. Um, so you don't, you try not to think about it. You don't, you don't even try to cry or whine about them, your injuries or your soreness, because uh, it's going to be there. So you got to, got to work through that. And a lot of it's mental. You know, if you can mentally prepare yourself to, to make it through this injury, then uh, I mean, it's nothing. I mean, you just see so many close calls that you know guys can get hurt all the time. Eddie has been around rodeos and bulls for a long time. When he was still in school, he used to spend all his summers riding around the country with his brother-in-law, who was himself a bullfighter at the time. Eddie Hatfield is my wife's little brother. He started going with me to rodeos when he's probably all 10 years old, I guess. We'd leave when school was out and come back when school started. So he's seen, he's seen the country. He's seen a lot of the good clowns throughout the years. And you know he should have turned out pretty good because he, he knew what he was looking for. It's cool for me to come as a little kid, you know, watching him fight bulls up to he and I being partners, you know. So uh, it's, it's, it's neat to be able to grow up and do that. There are a lot of good memories for Eddie and Jim Bob. 
but there are also a few nightmares. I've seen death. Yeah. When I was a kid, I can remember going to a rodeo with Jim Bob. Arkansas, Paragoo, little town in Arkansas, and there was a kid who just turned professional. He'd been doing some uh, other rodeos, and, and you know, if you're good, you get a reputation. You hear people hear about you, and I'd heard about this kid. And uh, I was sitting up on the fence during the bull riding, and a bull kind of got him lined up, was chasing him, and just, just ran over the top of him. And to me, it didn't really look like that big of a deal. No big deal, but it broke his neck, you know, and, and he eventually died, got pneumonia and died from the deal. It kind, of, it kind of has always stuck with me. I've always remembered it. You got to respect the danger. You, you, people ask you if you're scared. I've, I never say I'm scared, because I think somebody's looking out for me. But you, you, every time you go in that ring, you have to respect them. Meanwhile, in Tucson, the bullfighters are enjoying their last day off. Jeff and Quirt get to do some sightseeing while Daryl is holed up in his hotel room, giving his injured knee all the rest he can. Oh, I got a phone call on my barrel. After three days off, the gang in Tucson is rested and ready to go back to work. Against all odds, Daryl Diefenbach is back thanks to some small-scale miracle performed by athletic trainer Andy Hopkins. We're working as hard as we can to get him back in shape. I think it's, it's done a good deal for him. He's, he's in much better spirits than he was earlier in the week. Uh, he's ready to go today. His knee feels 100% better. And I think we'll see a whole other level of what Daryl normally fights bulls at. I think we'll see that today. I, I was really happy. It felt a lot better than I did four days ago, I know that. The crowd is back, the ground is dried up, and the four bullfighters are ready for some action. The dry ground will be a big help for Daryl's knee. Moving and running is going to be a lot easier for the bullfighter, but it's also going to be easier for the bulls to move around too. This cowboy is winning his battle, but he still needs to get off the bull. Quirt and Casey wait till the last second and storm the bull, confusing the animal long enough for the rider to escape. Like always, the bullfighters are wearing bandanas and baggy pants and skirts. The outfits are not just a part of their clown gear. They can actually save their lives. You know, when you're wearing bandanas and them baggy pants and you got a bull chasing you, a lot of times that bandana will blow up behind you. When that bandana blows up behind you, them bulls will see that bandana move out there, and you know, it may, it may you know, take their attention off of you for a split second to get away. Oh, and forget about those old wives' tales about bulls and the color red. They're actually colorblind. What gets their blood boiling is movement. Boy, wow. The bulls always go for the closest target, so when a rider falls right next to his head, the bullfighters only have a fraction of a second to jump right in between them. Jeff knew he was going to get hit, but his courage saved the cowboy from almost certain injury. You know, just being able to sit here and talk to him and knowing he's all right, I'm all right. You know, that just that makes it all worthwhile. It's better than money. There is a long tradition of bullfighting in Tucson. At the end of each performance, it is customary to let a bull loose so that the clowns can have some fun with it. It's called freestyling. It is bullfighting in its purest form. They don't have to worry anymore about saving the riders. It's a showdown between the bullfighters and the bulls. They will push their talent and their luck to the breaking point. 
Hey, I'm going to jump up top. Go up top. Stay down. Hey! Hey! It's great for the show, but it's extremely dangerous. Casey Wells may have pushed his luck too far. The stunt worked pretty well, but he hurt his ankle when he landed. Within seconds, Andy Hopkins is by his side. Back inside Jim Bob's trailer, Andy and Jim Bob are trying to convince Casey to go to the hospital and have his ankle x-rayed. Yeah, but two different dogs. Two different docs looked at it, and they both said you need a picture. Let's just go get a picture. Come on, Casey. I can't. I've got a picture of my heart attack. Right. He looked at me. Right for this. this. That's what I'm saying. This is a free deal. A free deal. Come on. Go, dumb dumb. And then we know. Then we know what we're dealing with. It's two two of them doctors think you fractured your ankle. Go, Casey. I'm giving you the benefit of the doubt. Go, you walked Casey. out on it. Yeah. Go, yeah. Let's just go see. Go, Casey. <clears throat> by 7 o'clock. We got steaks at 7. Come we on. can do it. Yeah. Right now. And I'm going to follow you over so I can bring you back. I'll, you can jump in the truck with me and come back over here. They finally managed to convince the bullfighter to seek medical advice. For Casey, it's a blessing in disguise. He knows that the diagnosis will have a major impact on his life. A broken ankle could put him out of work and income for at least several weeks. <laughs> Good news for Casey. As bad as it looks, his ankle is not broken, just badly bruised. Well, since these trainers have been working on it, uh, shoot, it feels, you know, almost 100%. So. Hundred percent relative. Yeah, yeah, but it's not quite hundred percent. But no, thanks to these Justin guys here, they they're the real athletes of the deal. They're the ones that keep us all put back together, and we owe them a lot. That's for sure. Casey wasn't the only casualty of the day. Jim Bob also earned his money. The 53-year-old clown hurt his neck when the bull sent his barrel flying. Oh, I don't know. That old bull hit my barrel. <laughs> what? Did you hit the barrel? Did you see that bull hit the barrel? Yeah. Why didn't you tell him don't do that? Because <laughs> it's funny. Tell that bull tomorrow don't do that. <laughs> Dummy. Come on, don't do that. So you big bully? Yeah, let's tell him a fathead. Yeah, call him a fathead tomorrow. <laughs> tell him don't hit Jim Bob's barrel. What's your name, buddy? While the bulls get some rest, the bullfighters are licking their wounds in the infirmary. And believe it or not, they're having a great time. Jeff, boy, you made a good showing. Um, you know, he had, uh, he, he took some bumps and bruises, but you know, that comes along with the game. Bullfighting is a hard way to make a living. In Tucson, which is one of the bigger rodeos in the country, the clowns are paid $600 a show. Not much considering that they put their lives on the line every single working day. USA Today even ranked bullfighting as the third worst job in sports. And on top of everything else, they have to put on makeup and wear funny clothes. It's just something that's been tradition for years, and, and we've just always done it like that. So it's kind of become a game plan, sort of a, you know, a pre-ritual type deal for us. You know, I'm a clown. <clears throat> I'm a bullfighter, um, and I'm damn proud of it. You ask 99% of these kids when they leave the rodeo what they remember. They remember us guys, the clowns, you know what I mean? And we need to keep them kids interested. And if that's what it takes to keep them interested so they can grow up and keep bringing their kids to the rodeo, yeah, I don't mind being called a rodeo clown. As far as what I'm dressed like, when I walk out of the arena, everybody there watching knows I'm a bullfighter because of what I just did. I mean, there ain't no doubt in anybody's mind. I could go out there in a dang tutu, you know, ballerina outfit, and they'd know I was a bullfighter by what I did, not by what I was dressed like. Well, when I was a kid, my parents would take me to the rodeo, and the clown would come up near the fence, and I would just freak out. Mom said she would just have to just keep me from climbing all up over her shoulder. I don't know what it was. She said I was scared of clowns, so it's kind of ironic that I became a clown. Can we have this Yeah. 
Rodeos are held all year long and all over North America. For bullfighters, that means a lot of time on the road, away from home and loved ones. The biggest sacrifice I've made is, is being away from mum and dad, you know. Every time I go home, mum and dad have gotten that little bit older, and it makes me sad. You know, I enjoy it. It's kind of nice to get away from home every now and then. It's kind of like a paid vacation, really. Can I wash black with red? Yeah, if you can wash whatever you want to wash. Didn't your mama tell you how to wash clothes? No. John Brogan is getting married in a few weeks, and his fiance is not a bullfighting fan. You fix me up, right? Love you. She's ready for me to retire, but she don't. I don't know when I'll do it. I'm not ready to retire, I guess. Neither is Jim Bob. But as long as I'm healthy, I like to. It's still fun. When it quits being fun, I'll probably quit doing it. Living the life of a professional bullfighter is not for everyone. But for those who do choose it, it can become more than a passion. It can be the ultimate experience. As long as it doesn't kill them first. I mean, I just love fighting bulls, and that's, you know, bull fighting bulls is scary, and you know that there's a chance that, hey, you could go out there and, and, and lose your life. But what a way to lose your life, huh?